Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you for the kind words, uh, Dean Mosqueda. Um, I'm very, very happy and honored to be here, um, uh, um, to be able to share, especially to the future generation of students here, um, what supply chain is all about. Um, like, like I'm sure like what uh, Dean Mosqueda said earlier, sometimes supply chain um, is not really the top of mind. Uh, normally, you don't talk about it um, so much. Uh, but in, in actuality, supply chain is very, very important in any industry. Um, I'll be showing that later. So today, what I'll do is I'll first discuss um, who we are uh, from the Supply Chain Management Association of the Philippines. And then I'll discuss a little bit what supply chain is and then what are the problems are. And then um, what is the... the um, what's the supply chain uh, outlook or what's the supply chain industry in the Philippines? And then I'll, dive, I'll dig deeper and dive into the agriculture supply chain, Ahmad. So um, let me just share my screen. Um, just give me a second, share my screen. Okay, here we go. Okay, so just, um, just to make sure, can you see my screen? Anyone? Sir, yes, please, sir. Okay, perfect. So again, um, uh, I'm Pierre Carlo Cure. Uh, I'm currently the president of the Supply Chain Management Association of the Philippines. Uh, I also am the CEO of, of a tech logistics uh, startup, uh, Insight SES. So I'm going to be discussing uh, the role of the supply chain management in agriculture and food security. After this uh, talk, um, we'll be uh, answering a lot of questions um, in, in the panel. And also, um, um, my objective is that for people listening right now, um, to understand better the role of supply chain management and how important it is, okay? So before that, let me introduce SEMAP. So the Supply Chain Management Association of the Philippines is um, around, we have around 200 members. It's the premier industry supply chain association. It's comprised of um, uh, large FMCGs, uh, large 3PLs, um, like fast-moving consumer goods like Nestle, Unilever, Procter & Gamble, um, uh, e-commerce giants. Um, they're part of the board, um, and 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 we're our, our goal is really to to help educate, advocate, and also communicate what happens. So we work very closely with um, government partners and, and private institutions to push forward supply chain and how to improve and how to make it world class. So we do that by creating some forums, some discussions. Um, we also work with government in terms of policy making. Um, if ever there's also issues in the supply chain, we're there. So, for example, at the onset of, of the, the pandemic last year, which is really, I'm sure, uh, I don't need to 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 um, say it, but, you know, it, it was really a, a really once-in-a-lifetime experience where um, uh, at the start, transport, movement of goods were hampered. Just imagine that, you know, food is, not, is unable to, to reach the consumers. Um, food has been been thrown away. Uh, the farmers didn't know where to bring their produce. Uh, they didn't have a choice but to harvest, but they had a problem to bring it. So, so we were one. We were one of the main proponent working with the uh, uh, IATF um, to to draft policies to make sure to ensure that the movement of goods, especially those that are important like food, medicine, um, uh, um, PPEs, so things like that. Um, we. That, that is something that, that, that we did. And that's something that, that um, the association has been doing for quite some time. So again, it, it, we advocate, we communicate, and we educate, um, uh, particularly in the supply chain industry. So what is a supply chain, right? A supply chain is a network between a company and its suppliers to produce and distribute a specific product to the final buyer. So this is a, a simple um, illustration. So, you know, from the farmer, bring it to the consolidator, bring it to the first mile, the transport, bring it to the warehouse processor, bring it to retailers, and then bring it to the last mile. So when you imagine this, um, when you go into the, when you go to the supermarket, when you buy uh, a piece of maybe mango, Right? When you go to the supermarket, can you imagine how many, how many steps or how long it traveled to get to you? Right? So um, one of the best mangoes we have are in, are in Cebu and in Davao. 
um, just imagine coming from Davao, bringing it to Manila, how long it takes. Diba? There are different steps. It goes to the consolidator. Um, it it, it being trucked from one point to another. Sometimes it's tr uh, the transport is via Roro, uh, via land, or via air, or via sea. So there are different ways. So you see how complex a supply chain is. So the main problem of supply chain is that because all of these different players, all of this different transport, all of these different systems, it's very complicated and it's really hard to manage. Um, and that's where all of the um, uh, problems lies. That's why uh, at the at the start of the pandemic, it really uh, um, because of, of of the complexity of especially agriculture supply chain, um, it it caused a lot of problems. So, like I said earlier, produce has been uh, vegetables have been thrown out. When you go to the supermarket or the palenque or the wet market, you don't see any um, produce. Kulang and it's very expensive, right? So, um, just. But before I go deeper into those problems, let me just give a snapshot of the Philippine supply chain and logistics. So we have 7,641 islands, right? Um, approximately 300 squ uh, square kilometers. We are the seventh highest number of islands among other countries. We, are, we have around 2,000 inhabited islands, right? So just imagine 2,000 inhabited islands. So when you look at it uh, here at the right side, you look at the Philippine map, you see just imagine how complex it would be, you know, um, traveling via land, then riding, a, um, going into to the sea or traveling via air. So the logistics and supply chain is very, very difficult to manage. So we have around 110 million population, 47% in urban population, while 52% in rural areas. We have 96% overall literacy rate. And the freight and logistics market, excuse me, um, is, is estimated to be $65 billion. That's, that's trillions of pesos by 2023. So, unlucky talaga ng market. So, just to, I want to dig deeper how important supply chain is, right? So, um, so transport and storage, which is the basic uh, um, uh, for supply chain, is that it's around 13 billion US dollars worth 4% of the Philippines' GDP around of 359 billion dollars so you'll see that it's a it has a big chunk of the total gdp of of um uh of the philippines so it, it's, it's quite important for us um the supply chain in the philippines so when you look at it also uh when the the the, 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 the importance of the supply chain is because it 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 um um touches all of the different industries manufacturing retail trade real estate construction, of course, agriculture and wholesale trade. When you look at this chart, it shows that um, as all of these industries grow, uh, supply chain, uh, transport and storage also grows, right? Because, you know, uh, when you do manufacturing, whatever you manufacture may it be um, food, may it be um, as simple as, as uh, um, uh, what they call bread or things like that. There's still a lot of supply chain there, right? So all of this, all of these industries are deeply affected by supply chain. And as these industries grow, supply chain and transport and logistics grows with them. Um, and then from 20 to 2010 to 2019, uh, when you look at it, the growth of importations, um, you see alongside that the gross value added in transport to storage also grows with it. So the more importation, the more the more logistics supply chain uh, grows with it because, right? When they when when the imports comes in, um, you still have to distribute it all over the different islands, two thousand islands in fact, right? So just imagine um, uh, as the more uh, when you look at it, you can see um, supply chain, transport, and logistics as the lifeblood of an economy, the lifeblood of of um, of the Philippines of our country. So um, now that we have a, a brief understanding of what supply chain and logistics is in the Philippines, we can talk about a little on the regional comparison. So the latest, um, the latest, uh, uh, what do you call this, logistics performance index way back in 2018. Um, although supposedly there's supposed to be a study by 2020. However, like you said, um, during the the the, the uh, pandemic, uh, there's no study have yet have been done. Uh, so here we we show that uh, we're the 60th um, in terms of ranking 
However, I think because of the pandemic and all of the issues, I think um, we, we've become lower. Uh, hopefully, uh, I'm wrong that that we've we've um, be, uh, we've ranked higher. Um, but uh, personal opinion, I think uh, we could have been uh, lower. Um, but we'll find that out as soon as the new uh, logistics performance index comes out. Um, but if you see here uh, across the region, across our neighbors, we're one of the lowest uh, behind Thailand, Vietnam, Malaysia, India, and Indonesia. So why? And what's the difference with that one, right? So the main problem is that uh, because of our ranking, because of our inefficiencies, um, transport and logistics, our cost for transport is actually 27.16%. So let's just put this into perspective. Just imagine what's the, what's the, what's the um, latest thing that you bought. If you went to the supermarket, what did you buy? Did you buy a, a can of corned beef? Did you buy a slice, uh, a loaf of bread? Or did you buy fruits and vegetables, right? Um, any product, any product that you've bought, um, you will see that um, the cost of logistics of bringing that product to you is almost 30%. Meaning one third of the price that you have, most of that is, through, is because of logistics. Just bringing it to you. Right? Even if you buy it at Lazada, if you, even if you buy it at the supermarket, the cost of logistics is still high. Comparatively with our neighbors, Vietnam is around 16.3%. Indonesia is around 21.4%. Um, Thailand is around 11.11%. Their cost to deliver, their cost, uh, their cost to their total sales. So just again, reminder that when you buy something, you can, based on these numbers, almost one third of that price goes to just bring, just the transport and delivery, the warehouse going to you. And why is this among our neighbors, right? So, so um, among our neighbors compared to Thailand, uh, Indonesia, especially Singapore, we are wrought with a lot of um, calamities, right? So earlier last year, last year was really um, mind blowing, right? So last year we had um, Taal. Uh, during the early part of the year, and it affected it affected um, the transport, uh, the deliveries because it cut out um, a lot of the roads. Uh, it damaged a lot of roads, and then um, uh, it 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 affected a major artery of of the transport and logistics. So aside from that, there are a lot of storms. We get hit with a lot of storms. Now I think we're having some. Um, uh, I think I don't know if if it's signal number two, but we're going through another heavy rains right now and it costs flooding and the, all of this flooding all of this damage affects um um hampers logistics it, it breaks the the chain right so so just imagine kung, kung the products from visayas the products from mindanao um uh with all of these calamities um it, it it you'll not be able to deliver that's basically it right um, if there's flood, you're gonna you're not gonna be able to, to cross. And being in a in a very uh, archipelagic country, um, where signal number one, um, no no vehicles can cross via Roro via the our ro roll on roll off um, boats, right? So that is that that is that's another problem. So that that adds to a lot of costs. Just imagine that if you're not able to deliver, it takes a few days more or, or longer to deliver. The cost just adds up. So that is the challenge of the Philippines, and that is why um, we are we are having a lot of these is issues, right? So so um, especially inter island shipments is greatly affected by all of these calamities. So the good thing is is what I can share is that um, um, there's a very strong relationship with government, uh, particularly DTI, uh, especially the the especially the the. Um, the group of um, ASIC Gene in the e-commerce and logistics uh, uh, bureau of, of the Department of Trade, we form the Logistics Services Philippines, like a group of different association groups, transporters, um, stakeholders to help solve these kinds of problems, to help uh, speed up the 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 and and provide a lot of solutions um, to 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 hopefully lower our cost of logistics. And we're very happy that this partnership is able to, to speed up and improve our logistics, although especially during the challenge uh, last year. So, um, but even all of these challenges, 
uh, even, even all of these problems in, in supply chain and logistics, I'm very um, hopeful for the future, especially with build, 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 um, especially with all of the bridges being done, all of the infrastructure that is being done. Um, you know, infrastructure is actually, uh, uh, um, is the one that will help supply chain and logistics. Because if you have a proper infrastructure, you'll be able to deliver, you'll be able to, to bring your goods faster. Right. So just just um, uh, put it this way. Um, imagine roads from the farm going to the trading post. Right. If the roads is not paved, if the roads is not is, is you know, um, mud and dirt, the, 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 the travel is longer, slower, and it's it's more prone to, to cause damage. Right. But if you have all of this infrastructure, if you have all of these bridges, if you have all of these roads built, if you have all of these linkages, it will speed up the cost of the, the delivery. So um, one of one of the, the main examples for bridges and roads. Uh, um, and although this is a, is a Manila um, uh, Luzon um, example, uh, I would they built what we call a Skyway Stage 3. So it, it, it's a it's a it's a. Um, a road here in, in, in Metro Manila that cuts travel time between north and south from two hours to just 30 minutes, right? So I, I, this is one of my favorite um, infrastructure projects because uh, when I travel to the north, it, what I used to do around two to three hours, it just takes me 30 minutes. Just, so just imagine the implications. So if you can cut down your delivery time by uh, almost uh, one-fifth, or one third, you can deliver three times more, or four times more, five times more in a given day, right? Unlike before, you you can only deliver once, right? So now, if you can deliver multiple times, three times a day, you can drastically reduce your cost of logistics. So that is that is that is the importance of having this infrastructure. So and 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 I'm sure um, I'm sure I, I I was listening to 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 some talk with the DPWH. I, I heard that there's a, 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 a also a Skyway in in Tagum, um, and and that, I'm sure that one one will also help, similar to what we what is being done here. I'm very excited with all of these build 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 projects, and 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 the work of the government on on pushing this infrastructure, and and by in the next few months or in the few years. This will greatly help reduce our cost of logistics. So now let's go to, to supply chain, right? So um, why is it important for agriculture? Supply chain is very, very important, okay? Um, why? Because um, food, the food producers, especially our farmers, most of them are in the rural areas, right? So the farmers, even if they grow, but they don't have a way to bring their products in an efficient and effective manner, then, then nothing happens, right? Even if, uh, if we cannot connect both the supply and demand, the supply meaning the farmer and the demand meaning the consumers, um, uh, nothing happens. No trade happens. There is no, there's no purpose for, for, for the farmer to grow their crops. There's no um, and then the, on the consumer side, there's no supply that's coming from uh, that they can they can get. So an efficient and an effective uh, supply chain is very important. Okay. So just before I uh, go deeper into that, I just want to tell a story. So um, my father, uh, my family is from um, Davao, actually, um, Panabo. So so my grandfather and my father um, has a lot of farms. Uh, you see here, this is the background. We have a coconut farm. Uh, used to be in Panabo, um, and and these my 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 uh, with all of my titos and titas, so around twelve of them, and and among all of the um, among all of the the apos, I was the one who who really loved urban farming. Although I didn't have a big land here uh, in Manila, but I love farming, so I did it on my own. I I, I dabbled in in you know newer technologies. Uh, hydroponics, aquaculture, um, aquaponics. So, so, and then trying to use technology to improve um, the, the supply chain, right? So, um, uh, and, and that's why I'm, I'm very happy uh, to be able to share and speak here uh, because agriculture is very close to my heart. So uh, going back, um, so uh, 
the Philippine agriculture is around 1.7 billion um, uh, uh, in terms of an agriculture production uh, at current prices by on 2020. Just imagine 1.7 billion. So on lucky no, di ba? So that, that's a that's a lot in terms of value. Um, this is the report uh, presentation of of uh, Dr. Rolando D. Um, talking about uh, food security. So most of them, 54% are coming on crops, fisheries 15%, poultry 14%, 17% in livestock. So ASEAN ranks um, in food security, unfortunately, uh, were ranked very low at 73 among 113 countries. So um, among our neighbors, Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand, Vietnam, and Singapore, um, we're, the, we're, we're actually the lowest um, in affordability, uh, mahal yung, yung, yung gulay natin, yung fruits and vegetables natin, availability, quality and safety uh, is also low um, in natural resources and resilience. So when you look at it, we're really um, um, ranked very, very low, uh, in, in especially with our neighbors. So in the Global Food Security in, Index. And it's because of, of what I've discussed earlier. And because of this, um, farmers and fisher folks has the highest poverty incidents in the Philippines, right? So, so um, uh, when you look at the PSA data, and when you look at the news, um, it's always uh, a lot of our farmers and fishers folks are, um, are are the poorest of the poor, right? So, so and, and it's because of a lot of these problems. And, and, and my understanding that if we can improve the supply chain, if we can improve the connection uh, to the, from the buyer, I, from the producers, food producers, to the um, to the buyers, we will be able to provide them uh, a better life. But this is the scenario. So this is a, a, a head of broccoli uh, in a supermarket. If you look at the price, it's 300 pesos per kilo, right? Um, it's 92.4 uh, pesos for, for around 300 grams, right? So in a, this is in a typical supermarket. You see how expensive it is, right? However, Broccoli, um, especially at the height of the pandemic, you know, broccoli was brought, bought at around 15 pesos during the height of the pandemic, but it was sold very high in the supermarkets, right? So it's really sad. The, the, our food producers, our farmers um, who, who grew this, but they, they are uh, uh, getting the, the short end of the stick. Similar to cauliflower, right? So cauliflower is around 250 pesos, but the price during the pandemic, at the height of the pandemic, is around 15 pesos. Because they they were not able to, they don't have um, a connection to to the to the demand side, to, to, to the buyers, right? So so this is one of the reasons why um, they're hit hard, right? So so the main problem is that we have a very fragmented um, agriculture uh, supply chain. Um, our farmers. Uh, getting the product from the farms around eight to ten steps. There's a lot of middlemen, you know, unfairly char short charging the farmers, and then the farmers share on the price around ten to fifteen percent. That's why like fifteen pesos. I uh, know it's really, really low. Um, and then high food waste. Aside from that, uh, pinaghirapan na farmers into thirty days to forty days, and because of the very fragmented and inefficient supply chain, thirty-five to fifty percent of that food wasted across is is, is wasted kagad in the supply chain. That's the reason why um, farmers are just throwing away their produce. And because um, the, the typical agriculture supply chain, madaming steps and eight to 10 steps. So madaming handling, there's a lot of um, uh, loading, unloading, a lot of um, um, transport, and all of this transport uh, manages a lot of, uh, removes a lot of the peelings, right? Kasi natatama, the damage, and it provides a lower quality. So um, uh, I'm sure for the agriculture students here, uh, if you went to the farm, a typical cabbage farm. A cabbage, when you when you harvest a cabbage, it's so, sometimes it's this big. I think if you you see my uh, the picture earlier uh, that I had, the cabbage can be as this big. But when you buy the supermarket, cabbage is already this small, right? That's how much waste is being done, and those are just being thrown away. So um, so how do you how do you get your fruits and vegetables? Typically, from the farmer, uh, it's it's being brought to by a transporter. Uh, and then brought to a trading post or a consolidation area, and then you know um, sold to 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 buy to wholesalers um, and then retailers, and then you know transport again coming from the the rural areas, uh, brought to the consolidation area to be processed, 
and then um, processed by uh, multiple people to be brought to the supermarkets, and then before it arrives to you. So just imagine how many steps, and this is a, this is a short step, right? Um, when you talk about the di different, um, going to the different wet markets, going to the different, um, different uh, transport providers, uh, there's a lot more, but this is the basic one of the shortest of the of a traditional um, agriculture supply chain. So the more handling, the more movement, uh, the more touches adds cost to each step. At the same time, reduces quality, and at the same time, increases um, uh, wastage so up to fifty percent. Sometimes it goes up to seventy percent. So during the height of the pandemic, um, this two the, this two parts of the supply chain was broken, right? The transporter, um, there were no transporters because they cannot, they, um, because of all of the lockdowns, they're unable to bring the produce. So what happens to all? Everything becomes broken. Uh, um, farmers were just now throwing away their produce because um, they're, they, they're unable to bring to bring their produce to the buyers. So that is that what that's what happened. So um, because they didn't have access to to to, to the supply side, uh, the, the, sorry, the farmers didn't have access to the buyers. So um, uh, and it's all about and it's all because uh, a very fragmented, a very long, and a very uh, inefficient supply chain. So I'll, I'll give an example. Um, what kind of innovation on in supply chain? That allows um, uh, that will uh, improve uh, that, that will help the farmer improve the quality and provide um, um, a connection to uh, from the farmer to the to the buyers. So so and then let me just talk about some supply chain innovation. So um, last year because of the pandemic uh, we worked closely uh, um, our, this, uh, the SE map uh, and also my company Inside SES uh, developed the. Uh, alongside USAID uh, as our main partner, develop the delivery platform. So our objective for the delivery platform is to shorten the supply chain, right? So rather than all of those different steps, we, we shorten the steps so that the quality will be better, lesser handling and higher price um, uh, so and higher share of the, of the price for the farmer. So we can see here Secretary Mon Lopez of BTI, Secretary Dar of DA, Cab Sec, uh, Secretary Carlo Nograles, um, and also FDI President Ariel Buenaventura, um, uh, the president of the Supply Chain Management Association of the Philippines, uh, the previous president, and, uh, and also the Philippine Chamber of Commerce, Robert Amores, and Agri Co-op, and also our main partner, our, our major partner, um, US, USAID um, Philippines uh, um, acting, uh, acting Mission Director Patrick Western. So because of the, because of, of what we've done here, um, the, the DA USAID um, um, acknowledges and, and, and has been really pushing uh, the project because they see the benefit and the impact that it can give to, to the farmers. So with, with the delivery partner, how, how do we help farmers? So remember, um, we have eight to 10 steps. Now with a platform, we're able to shorten that, right? So from eight to 10 steps, we're able to bring it down to around four steps, okay? How do we do that? So so uh, so basically connecting the, the farmer straight to the buyers through technology. So let me illustrate, okay? So you remember earlier that there these are the different stakeholders. There's the farmer, the consolidator, the first mile warehouse processor. Um, retailers in the last mile. So using the platform, um, uh, we use technology uh, to provide the, the, that, that seamless, that, that faster um, um, coordination and integration. So here, if you look here at the, at the right side, using the using e-commerce as a base, um, the retailers can now order online. And then these orders we send it now straight to the farmers or the co-ops, right? So from these farmers to the co-ops, they can gather all of these orders. So so sometimes they, um, some of our uh, some of our um, uh, uh, the farmers or co-ops in, in the platform, uh, they don't have they they only they just need to harvest when there's an order. So this it's not any more waste, right? So for after that, once that order has been placed. Um, generated the bulk order is sent to the consolidator among, to gather all of the different produce of the different farmers, and then a truck um, using a, a transport app um, is being used to to bring it to the warehouse processor. So then from here, there's an inventory app that can uh, generate all of the pick list, 
all of the 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 way bills so that it can be delivered it can be sold by the retailer or it can be sold by um directly to the consumer so with this approach it it greatly shortens the supply chain right R rather than eight to ten steps madaming steps um um using technology the farmer the consolidator even the retailer or the buyer can directly order um to the farmer themselves rather than waiting for each step to come in so uh to show more of the impact so for example the cabbage value chain um versus the traditional uh, uh versus delivery so um uh when you look at it uh um here on the left side is the traditional um um value chain uh, or supply chain for cabbage so uh the farmer sells at 18 pesos um farm gate price and then the disposer buys it 20 pesos it adds another cost assembler adds another cost middleman trader adds another cost and then wholesaler adds another cost and the retail market um adds of course another cost up to pagdating naman sa supermarket and then before and then when it arrives to you uh sa end consumer the cost is already 700 like what i showed kanina diba, with the price of the broccoli and and the and the excuse me the the cauliflower right so antasna because all of these steps adds and increase the cost diba? so by the time it reaches the consumer matasna and delivery because um there's a more of a direct uh relationship between the the, the buyer um the retailers the consumers going to the farmer and then the farmer is able to 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 find uh to increase their their market to to uh where they can sell um it, it we're able to increase the farmer income uh buying it to them at a higher price around 50 pesos uh and then adds it of course you still need consolidation then there's additional costs um and then the delivery to a central warehouse where the last mile distribution is being delivered or or where the supermarket is so um and then the end consumers it provides a fresh and better quality so it provides a higher income for these farmers uh lower prices for consumers and then um 10 to 20 percent uh uh um, at least 10 to 20 percent directly for the, for the consumers and then fresher vegetable because lesser touch points so much fresher dumarating because multiple handling um it, uh, it uh lesser ngayon ang damage so the because of that innovation because of the, the use of technology or optimizing supply chain right um we're able to to uh the innovation impact has around 10,000 orders 10,000 orders around 4,400 customers uh value wars around 19 million uh in the platform we have around 14,000 farmers registered across different co-ops and cooperatives and farmer groups around 290 tons moved um we're able to increase the the um, revenue increase from around 100 percent and and what we're proud of is that we're able to reduce the 30 to 50 percent waste to around five percent so just imagine if we can reduce that waste itself um uh it will increase the productivity and it will make it easier for the farmers right um and then it will dramatically lower the cost right so so that is why um that is why supply chains is very very important uh role to to um to agriculture i i always ask diba? when you go to the when you talk about let's talk about um pure foods right when you look at the can of corned beef right when you got can of corned beef you will be surprised why is a can of corned beef corned beef more expensive than the the um head of broccoli earlier the way broccoli canina 200 per kilo sha diba pero yung 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 carne ng corn beef which goes through a lot of process right so imagine yung ang corn beef mas madaming dinaanan yun but the, the cost is lower right compared to our vegetables and fruits na lesser dapat diba it's because uh our fmcgs are multinationals the, the likes of uh pure foods the likes of nestle Procter and Gamble, their supply chain is very efficient. That's why they're able to lower their cost very much. And they provide the consumers a high quality, lower cost product. So that that is the, and that's all about supply chain and logistics. And that's one that's something that we want to do. And we ask everybody to focus on when we, when it comes to to providing a lot of value to the to the um to our farmers uh to, to the whole agriculture supply chain and because of this type of of impacts we're able to 
to greatly add value to everybody and 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 um, reduce the cost, increase the revenue, and also reduce the waste. So before I I I um I end the last few slides, I just want to share what's the future of agriculture supply chain. Um, there will be a lot of uh, um, IoT, uh, Internet of Things, uh, drones. So for the for the uh, for the younger agriculture students here, um, the future is very bright. Uh, if you like to play with drones, that's the next. I uh, know that's the next um, level of, of agriculture that we have. You're going to be uh, there's going to be a lot of Internet of Things sensors. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to put pala some slides on that one, uh, but it's going to be exciting. Gone are the days that you have to to um, uh, be under the, the 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 sun all day or most of the day to harvest. Um, there's going to be a lot of technology that's going to be in the future. Um, drones, if you like flying, um, uh, drones will be there. Drones will will provide um, you know uh, can check the status of the soil, check the status of it rather than you know um, us going through the field. The drones, you know, you can fly drones and check it out. Ah, kung san may sakit or what's the quality of the uh, of the planting, etc. IoT sensors on the soil that can check um, what kind of of nutrients lacking or 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 not, um, and then we can provide a very uh, uh, specific um, targeted approach on on um, um, providing those nutrients. Um, but what uh, uh, and then there will be a lot of robotics um, uh, in the future. Um, I suggest checking out uh, the Netherlands and Israel. Um, they're very good uh, in terms of technology. You'll see a lot of future of agriculture and supply chain there. But what I'm excited, what, what I'm really, um, what I see the future is, is really um, e-commerce, right? So uh, this is the, the e-commerce information uh, for the younger ones, especially the agriculture students. I uh, just want to go back to a briefer. Um, I'm sure we have 110 uh, million uh, Filipino, 47.6 are urbanized. Um, 142.4 million verse population of mobile connections. So, madami jan, uh, dalawa ang cell phone. Um, and, and you can see that there's a lot more mobile connections, mobile uh, sims out there uh, in terms of population. Internet users around 73.91 million. Um, in terms of population and active social me media users, yung mga nagti TikTok, uh, yung mga, um, mga Instagram, and then yung mga mga younger ones, uh, yung mga mga batch ko na mga younger ones, yung mga Facebook yun, yun yung mga. So madami yan. So social slatian is all social media. And 89 million of of the Filipinos are in social media. Um, and it's in from 2020 to 2021, the the growth has been high. Especially for for active social media users, around twenty one point nine percent, and and six point one in internet users, and then you know are increase in 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 population. So so why I say this, right? So e commerce um is 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 going to be the next big thing. If you look at here, um, the the food and personal care is around four hundred eighty three point five million dollars. That's going to be in billions of pesos already, um um uh, or almost a trillion pesos already. So. So you see how big uh, food and personal care is. So food and personal care is right smack in the middle of agriculture, right? So you see how big how big the market for this alone, right? So, and then the growth of that um, among all of the different categories of e-commerce, food has the highest, 64.3% uh, growth among all of the different, um, uh, all of the different platforms. So this is because, you know, um, online uh, on, online selling online buying maybe Facebook Marketplace or Lazada um, or or Shopee or Grab um, the growth has been really big on food and personal care so so um, using technology using future um, agriculture practices future um, technologies to provide a faster approach uh, shorter distances um, more direct to the end consumer um uh will be the future of our agriculture supply chain so um just to do a, a short recap uh supply chain is very very important because um it's not only in agriculture but also in in all industries um and and but it's it's more important in, in agriculture because uh 
uh, currently our, our agriculture is very fragmented. Um, it's very inefficient. There's so many steps to bring the produce of the farmer to the consumer. And it's, it adds a lot of cost and it, it, it reduces quality and adds a lot of waste. So, um, but when we optimize the supply chain, when we find ways to where we can shorten the deliveries, uh, maybe using technology or maybe just even just revisiting or, or, or infrastructure or just finding ways on how to um, um, provide that, that, that um, shorter uh, supply chain or maybe cold chain. Um, so, so those th technologies we need. And, and I ask all of the students, especially here, you're the future. You're the future of, of our country and the agriculture students to, to come in and find all of this wonderful um, future technology in agriculture so that we can feed the nation. You are our hope, you are our future, and, I'm, and I thank you for, for attending, and I'm very happy to be able to share. Um, thank you very much. Again, I'm Pierre Cardacurai of the Supply Chain Management Association of the Philippines, and thank you for having me here. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, po, Sir Carlo, for that very uh, fascinating na presentation. Na dami nun po namin natutunan from what you've discussed earlier. So now, Sir, let's move to our open forum. Okay, lang po ba na start na tayo? Yes, yes. Okay, so now, Sir, uh, for our first question, ito po, meron pong nagtatanong, does your organization offer supply chain and logistics training? If so, where should we go and how to avail of these training sessions? Yes, that's, that's correct. Um, the um, SE map, um, we provide a lot of trainings. Uh, um, I think we have uh, um, quarterly or almost monthly um, supply chain uh, sessions. Um, supply chain live uh, where we have a lot of practitioners and experts and also from the academe that can provide their knowledge their experience um, especially high level uh, um, supply chain experts uh, that, that came from uh, large FMCGs so there, there, um, there are a lot of our um, mentors and, and, and um, educators on our end like they said earlier SE map one of the one of our core tenants is educate so we have all of these programs. And I would like to invite everybody that in the coming supply chain um, conference uh, that's going to be happening, happening uh, in October, uh, you can visit our website at semap.org or visit our, our Facebook page uh, to get more details of all of these trainings and seminars. At um, um, Just look for SEMAP or Supply Chain Management Association of the Philippines in Facebook. Okay, that's very good to hear. So uh, to our viewers, no, uh, please do look forward to that. So visit again is what Sir Carla, uh, Sir Pierre have said. Uh, please visit their website and also um, please do look forward to the uh, to their um, convention. Conference. Conference. conference, yes, conference on October. So uh, para mas malaman yung pa or mas marami pa kayong matutunan about supply chain. So yon. Thank you so much for that, sir. Let's move to our second question. Ito naman po. To become a competent supply chain manager, what skill sets should one possess? Um, um, to be competent is uh, it's a, it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of technical skill set. But um, you have to be you have uh, the, the thing is with supply chain is it's very complex, right? There's there's very um, you have to be able to one think technically, um, you know, know your numbers, understand systems. Right, but on the other hand, you have to also think creatively, because um, supply chain and logistics is all about finding creative solutions. Right, um, you uh, like we said, like what I showed innovations earlier. Um, if you if you stick with with the, the typical process, you will not be able to solve um, a lot of this. And and supply chain and logistics is all about problem solving. Uh, the joke, guys, nice, eh? the joke in 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 our industry is that uh, we solve most of the problems. Um, but we don't we don't uh, get all of the credit. <laughs> so so uh, that's the uh, because pag may problema sa, sa, when there's a there's a shortage of trucks, if there's a port that is uh, no, that's um, over capacity or there's a road that is damaged, um, we are the ones being called on how to solve these problems. Where we, for example, um, that the one of the biggest typhoons, the by Haiyan yata or Yolanda, um, it, that really that really devastated the supply chain. Talagang, especially in, in, in our, 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 our ano, in Ormoc, in Tacloban, talagang tinamaan sila. And it took a while, di ba? It took almost, almost a month before food 
produce um, was able to get there. However, um, our supply chain, um, our supply chain, uh, um, uh, what do you call this? Colleagues was able to bring produce as soon as naging available. Uh, our partners, our our members like Nestle, Unilever, uh, Procter and Gamble were able to bring in goods kaagad. They were, because they already planned out ahead on on how to 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 uh, bring this um, in, into into Tacloban. So as soon as na na lift yung 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 um na pwede na magdala they were able to bring it right so it it cre- it you need a lot of um um technical knowledge um uh you need a lot especially the more complex it is the more uh, engineering knowledge do you need but you also need the creative side because um you need to understand where can we find and how to solve these problems so you need both so that that is my my take on it Okay, thank you so much, sir. Very well said. No, and then, ah, uh, onga yung mga supply chain managers or actors natin ay talagang mga um quiet workers lang in kogito yeah. nagviewer. Exactly. Opo. Exactly. Yun. So now, sir, let's go to the next question. Ito naman po may nagtatanong. You have mentioned that logistics cost account for almost thirty percent of the total product cost. What are the strategies to reduce this cost? That is a that is a very very a good question. Thank you for asking. Right. So um, one of the one of the main um, ways to reduce this cost is infrastructure, um, better roads, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, what do you call this? Uh, more linkages. Right. So so one of the examples that I have, I remember uh, when I was in in Davao uh, when I when, when I was in uh, again the Oro um, um, during my mentor me days for Go Negosyo. Uh, before the pandemic, um, from the airport, I remember it was very traffic uh, because the road was being built. It took me from the airport, I think, around almost two hours to get to the resort for the for the meeting. And and I remember again, the Oro is not really that big, right? So, but the traffic was really bad during that time, and 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 because the road was being built. However, when I was told that the, the road was already built, from the two hours became now like thirty minutes, I think, or or less than that. So. Having that infrastructure, um, uh, they widened the road. Uh, it cut down. It, it immediately cut down the, the the time to arrive. So, meaning, for example, let's put it this way: if you're gonna deliver a product from one point to another, if it takes you two hours in a day, you, you can only deliver how many times, right? So, but if you can, if you're able to deliver but in within 30 minutes, so you can deliver three times faster. And then the more the more deliveries that you can do, the 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 lower the cost because uh, economies of scale, eh, So mas mabilis ang ikot ng ano ng delivery. So that's one. Infrastructure is the number one um, um, uh, way to improve uh, to lower the logistics cost. Um, and I'm and 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 I'm very um, hopeful uh, because of the build, build, especially in the next few years when once all of these are already online. It's gonna be uh, a game changer. Um, second is also education, right? So we need a lot more um, supply chain practitioners. There are very, very few, uh, and 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 um, uh, there are very uh, there are very few, and there are very few experts, uh, particularly supply chain, and more so in agriculture. <laughs> so so that is that is what we that what we're looking for, uh, like like institutions like Savior. Um, who has these kinds of, of seminars and focus on agriculture and hopefully focus also in supply chain, you know, to, to make to make um, them understand. Uh, I understand most of the time it's, the focus is on production, production side, but um, even if you have really good production, but you cannot bring it to the customer, uh, there's no point then. So um, what I would like to, to ask is, as part even with, with, with SEMAP, we, we, we can work closely, part of our... Um, Initiative is educate, right? So we want to educate more to bring, um, uh, re- regardless of if, if it's um, uh, a skill, a logistic skill, or if it's a management skill, um, that's something that we want to improve and further uh, bring about so that we can have more people to be able to solve more problems. Um, and I totally believe, right, uh, a lot of the problems um, that's happening is really a lot of it's more on supply chain and logistics. Now, bringing the goods, um, the quality, and all is 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 in 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 the supply chain. So, and then the, the third one is closer ties 
with government. Um, more private and public uh, partnership. However, um, in the past few years, um, I see a big improvement on that one, uh, especially working with DTI, especially working with DA. There's a lot of close um, whole of nation approach, whole of government approach that's been happening. And, and, um, and, and we're very happy with that. And then just last year, uh, we've seen, the, the, we've seen the, the results of that kind of partnership. So, so um, uh, going back, but among the three, um, uh, infrastructure, I believe, technology, I believe will be the, the best, especially the future technologies um, will be the, the best way to reduce the cost. And when once all this online, I'm seeing maybe from one third, from around almost 30%, we can lower it around 15% to half or, or around lower than 15%. Hopefully, if we can go to 11%, that will be really great. Um, we can bring more products. Uh, goods will be cheaper. Uh, more affordable, diba? so so that is the the no, that is the advantage of having a lower logistics cost. Okay, thank you so much, sir, for clearing that up. No, and then just a recap, sabi ngani, uh, sir, pair that is infrastructure, education, um, close relationship with the government or linkage with uh, between the public and the private sector, and lastly, technology. So, onga po, uh, we are also hoping no, na uh, in the near future the costs would really be um, at at least man lang cut in half so that um, happy tayong lahat <laughs> Yun nga. So. Yun, sir, thank you so much for answering that question. Let's move to the next one. Ito naman po may nagtatanong. For smallholder farmers in remote communities where IT infrastructure and capability is still non-existent, how can deliver, uh, deliver e-platform help them? Yeah, um, um, one, of the, one of the, because like we said earlier, delivery is, is a multi-component. Uh, there are different solutions, right? One of the, the major solutions that we have is a farmer app. Right. Uh, we've talked to a couple of farmers, especially smallholder farmers. Um, one of their asks is that, um, um, you know, if they get, get access, even just the pricing of the different trading posts, right? So that they can have understanding, okay, makano na ba dun sa trading post na to? So that they can choose where to bring it, right? So, so um, because most of the time they, they, they go, um, they harvest and then they bring it to the trading post and hope na kung sino pwedeng bumili. Right? Most of the time, that, that's what happens. Eh. And, and, and that's where uh, a lot of the disconnect happens. Na, na madaming, na short change sila, na bago, misang bago dating, uh, medyo sorry, babaratin. Dahil nga, baka kumay, sabay-sabay. Diba? But if, if um, these farmers are able to, to provide that, visit, uh, they, they understand kung saan trading post, um, then they can, they can bring their, their products. There. Kasi nakita, oh, mas mataas pala yung presyo dyan. So, so those, are the, those are the simpler thing. Um, we've also incorporated also SMS na kunyari gusto, gusto ng farmer oh yeah SMS lang meron siya they can send an SMS to delivery then it's going to send back okay itim prices na sa trading trading post na to so that they can check that out um uh, just an example for example there was there was a farmer that that wanted to that was checking three trading posts uh, in Luzon um in fact because dun sa isang trading post may shortage dun yan nadala kahit malayo it's it's farther um uh yung trading post ito sa South Luzon pa pero galing siya sa North Luzon kay 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 deliver niya sa South Luzon mas malaki pa yung naging kita niya diba so those are the no those are the the advantages and and secondly um on the farmer app uh we're looking at providing that they can upload their produce so sabihin natin oh, 30 days magkakano sila ng carrots na gantong kilo diba and this information will be sent now to the buyers so baka yung mga buyers na, okay lang ko nga 30 kilos. For example, um, we're working with a lot of, um, uh, what do you call this, um, uh, yung sa, sa DUST, yung Nutribun project. So one of the bigger food processors, one of the big, uh, bakeries, we were able to connect them to a squash um, ano, squash uh, supplier, right? And that the squash supplier, I think they ordered on 25 tons, right? Pero it, um, we're able to facilitate that connection. Uh, but before, they were having a hard time kasi bibili lang sila ng squash sa pinakamalapit na palengke, which is going to be more expensive, di ba? So here, um, connecting them directly to a co-op or a farmer group or, or the farmer themselves, um, it can shorten now rather than from farmer, like sabi ko kanina, from farmer, transporter, trading post, palengke, bago dumating dito sa food processor. Ngayon, diretso na yung connection. 
so they can supply na and then the, the cost is lower and then um they will be able to to make more uh nutri bonds na no for for you know for our for our children for our for our students right so so that is that is you know that is um what we're doing and and the smallholder farmers can now uh, uh provide that I know that that uh, I, we can provide that now uh, to the technology that technology to smallholder farmers, regardless of they're only using SMS or regardless of they're using uh, a mobile phone. Okay, thank you so much, sir. And uh, I think this is uh, actually uh, this next question is actually somewhat related lang earlier, uh, and um, and I think you've met, uh, you've answered a part of it, but still I'll ask lang if uh, and if you have anything to add po. Ito from sure, one sure. of our Facebook user, uh, from Keith Keith. Huntilia, sabi po niya, not all farmers have high education and have internet connection in their area. How would or can they accept demand through the app? Thanks. Yeah, that, that, that's a good question. We've considered that actually. Um, that is why uh, we work with two groups. We work with uh, a lot of co-ops and a lot of um, farmer groups uh, that can help educate the farmers that are not yet familiar with the technology. And, and that's why we... we 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 brought in even SMS, um, even at the, at the bare bones in the SMS, they can send their um, they can send their their production, they can check prices, and then we can send um, buyers can send their orders to to those farmers. But in uh, we're also working with JICA, uh, hopefully to build something a, a POC a proof of concept on how we can provide more value to these farmers. Um, we're going to be doing that study in in the next few months, and hopefully. Um, we can further enhance this this platform. Um, but what I'm what I'm uh, what I'm very excited about is because of the pandemic, uh, a lot of the farmers, especially the, the next generation, the children are, are very tech savvy. So they they use the app, they use uh, Facebook, even even Facebook um, connected Messenger, Messenger group, Viber groups to sell their pro produce. So so. Um, I understand the, the 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 older generation might have uh, might um, might have some problems with with newer technology, but the nice thing is their children, their the younger generation who, who who's going into 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 agriculture through these technology platforms uh, is picking up. In, in fact, um, in, in our experience, uh, even w just imagine this: uh, we're we're going into we do trainings to farmers via Zoom. So just imagine, um, I'm, even ako, I'm surprised. I'm surprised na, that the farmers are able to connect using their mobile phone nandun sila sa farm, right? Or so those farmers na walang internet connection, they go to the co-op they're part with and, they, 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 and then they attend. So, so um, uh, I know it's a challenge, but it's not far flung. Uh, it's really, there's still another, you know, um, it's being solved right now and our objective at delivery is really to push that further with the help of our government partners and development partners. Okay. Yes, that's uh, that's very true. No, and uh, we are also very happy to know uh, these things. Now our farmers are really adapting to the technology, so yes. that's a very good thing. So ito po from Babi Sidano. Sabi po niya, adding AI to local farmers, uh, it's additional cost. So who take uh, who will take the charge of this cost now? Government didn't support from there after. Yeah. Um. For delivery, when we use our technology. We don't charge the farmers, right? So we charge the buyers. Champions, you buyers, no my money, right? So um, because the, we are able to generate cost savings uh, in the platform, um, the, on the we, we we in fact we buy it from the farmer at a higher price because you know, it's more direct. When I showed the illustration, Kanina, um, the the supply chain is shorter, so there's lesser cost rather than imagine kung kung may sampung tao magdadagdag ng dalawang piso or limang piso at each stage, magiging ano na rin yan, 50 na rin yan, di ba? So, but if it's only four, four people, we can, the savings, we can give it to the, 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 the savings on the platform or the supply, the shorter supply chain, we can give it now to the farmer. So, mas madagdag, mas madagdag, kasa 15 pesos, baby, 50 na bilhin natin. On the other side naman, it's also, it, um, the retailer can also sell it at a lower price for the consumers. Right or the consumers can get it at a lower price because it's more costly. The ano nagkakaroon ng savings. So, so um uh that is where no that is where um the that that that's where the cost of the technology comes in. So we charge the buyers, right? Um, part of our phase two of our technology is is providing AI 
on the de- uh, what we call demand planning or forecasting. So um, I understand one of the major problems of farmers is actually don't know what to plant. Sometimes kaya nagkakaroon ng oversupply um, in a lot of farms. Kunyari isang farm nagtanim ng ng uh, tomato, kamatis, halos lahat ng farms magdadrink ng kamatis. So ang nangyayari nagiging oversupply. So when they bring it to the trading post, babaratin talaga sila kasi nga oversupply, di ba? So we try to help that um, that problem by connecting them to more buyers. So they have, we're able to help but it's really bas, sobrang dami pa rin talaga eh. So what we see is that using a artificial intelligence to to generate an accurate forecasting, meaning masasabi niya okay next month ang kailangan natin ganito kadaming tons ng ng tomato. Babalik namin ngayon sa farmer or sa co-op. Oh, ito yung lista na sa tingin na, na ano, base do sa demand, demand in in the next two months, ito yung mga requirement. So now they can plan ahead kung ano yung tatanim, 'di ba? And by the time they harvest, walang oversupply. Kasi ngayon, um there's 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 very little ano eh. Although I know this is ano eh, it's easier said than done. Um but what we what we believe is that um it's better to try doing it and hopefully solving it. And if in if and it's a big problem and that's why we work we we work very closely with both private and, and government partners to solve these problems and 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 that, that's one of the things that we want to use to solve that so so that um i think that will uh um help uh in terms of ai and other technologies that can help improve because with the technology it can help cost save and these cost savings can be um passed on to the consumers uh lower the cost and then provide more revenue for the farmers. Yes, okay. Wow, that's actually that is the dream talaga sir no to yes. have that kind yes. of technology within reach for our farmers because that I just to add pala. Yeah, just to add just to add um in the best case use case this one is in Netherlands. Mm-hmm. See, Netherlands is a small country but they're exporting. They're exporting, they're using future technology. Sa Netherlands, malamig doon, malamig doon, but they're growing tomatoes. They're exporting tomatoes, they're exporting potatoes using technology. So, kaya nga, I, I, I mentioned this to, especially to the agriculture students para ma-excite sila. Um, all of this future technology is really great. Um, farming is really sexy now with all of this. Ano. So, so yun. Um, and then, because of the savings there, the cost is not passed on to the farmer. Uh, in fact, the cost, uh, revenues can increase, help increase the farmer income. Okay, wow. That's that's very. Uh, we hope, sir, that uh, you you will, I uh, know, um, reach no you uh, to or uh, develop the technology soon here in the Philippines. Because again, that is really very helpful to our farmers. Because uh, even here, our farmers in Mindanao uh, have the same problem, talaga. Yeah. Yun yung presyo yung sa kanila. Um, it's really the uh, elasticity of price, one of the yes. problems. Yun. So now, sir, let's move to the next question. Ito naman po may nagpapatanong in. In some mountainous rural areas in Bukidnon, there are no paved roads, no trading posts, and horses and carabaos are the only means of transporting their products. What would be a good supply chain solution for this kind of condition? Um, the, 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 at, the, at the top of my head, uh, the first thing I can say is really infrastructure. Um, a paved road will make it easier. Um, it's, not, um, uh, it's not even rocket science, you know. Uh, I've seen this. Na, I've seen it all over, not only in 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 Mindanao or in, in but all over the Philippines. Na from the farm side, um, karabaos lang yung nagdadala, and then imagine gano ka tagtag yon, baka mahulog pa yung produce. By the time na dumating na sa eh, kung wala, kasi alam ko sometimes dinadala lang sa kalye, eh, di ba? And then hopefully meron dadaan na na truck na pwedeng magdala sa sa paliparan or sa sa trading post. So or the Lindisa Metro Manila. So um and 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 those are the no and those are the the challenges. Uh um it, that is where we're working also with the, the with BOI um the board of investments to find ways on how where we can locate some um, cold chain facilities or or trading posts or warehouses that 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 can be uh, that ca- the farmers can uh, can bring this produce because if we can connect them to the broader supply chain um, maybe we can put uh, if there's warehouse a smaller warehouse in, in near their area with they can it can be consolidated 
Um, and then that consoli consolidation area or mini warehouses, may regular na dumadana truck, pick up doon, and then can bring straight to the nearest trading post. So um, uh, getting that connection uh, um, will will really help the, the the farmers, especially in rural areas. Um, meron nga isa, I remember, um, uh, meron ang, ang, ano niya, ang, ang benta niya is, is high quality na marang and ube, ay, ay na, 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 na tama na ube in 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 Nueva Vizcaya pero you have to you have to cross two rivers before you, and then the two rivers maliit na bangka to travel so um uh merong merong karabaw magdadala dun sa bangka may may isang isang nang karabaw kukuha na kasi nga it's not a paved road so these are the challenges um and all of this all of this in ano uh adds cost Kaya normally, especially for those farmer, farmers, we tell the consumers, um, we, kaya, kaya misan, if the consumers will say, bakit ang mahal nung, nung ano? Sabi ko, ma'am, dalawang, dalawang rivers ang dinaanan bago umabot dito yan. So, and then we educate. We educate the consumers so that we can buy it at a good price ng farmers. So imagine mo kung dinala na sa, sa trading posts, babaratin sila. Parang wala, kaya nga tinatakon na lang eh, di ba? So I understand very clearly where it is. So so part of the education is also on the consumer side. Um na sinasabi namin na it there can be uh lower prices in 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 the in, in out there but here this specific farmer we put the story out there na it, they had to go through this one and and it it's not it, it would help them to uh, to to educate um to buy from them. You know, it because the, lit, the even if even if you um um the little that you buy from them really helps, right? So the two things that that, that take away is one, um, infrastructure uh, to help the the, the you know to, the, without the paved roads, and secondly is is educate also the consumers that um, the challenges on the farm side, and then putting the story out there to the farmer. I don't know tao, diba? But if they see the farmer, they want to help. Everybody wants to help, diba? So we have a lot of people who buys uh, and and help the farmers because and and then dinas sila even sabi kung mas mahal siya. Um, they're willing to buy it. So, so that is that is the no, that's the, I think that, that's the two takeaways that they have. Yes, that's so true, sir. Uh, even here, uh, we have experiences talaga. Some of our farmers here in Mandawa would say na mas malaki pa yung gastos nila sa pagpapababa ng kanilang mga produkto exactly. uh, to exactly. the market kesa sa yung profit na nakukuha nila. So, sometimes, exactly. yeah, they would just hesitate na nga to, to uh, parang ipababa pa yung produkto nila kasi mas malaki nga daw yung gasto. So, yeah, thank you so much, sir, for answering that question. So, again, that's uh, uh, infrastructure talaga and uh, educating our consumers. And to, of course, to our consumers who are watching, no, uh, sana tayo din, if bibili tayo ng produkto, let's also uh, wonder kung paano ba nakarating sa atin yung mga produkto na yan. Kasi mahaba-habang proseso yung dinaanan. So, yes. and now, po, yes, let's move to the next Yes po. Let's move to the next question. Ito naman po, may nagpapatanong. What are the major things that must be considered in establishing and operating a supply chain and logistics business for agriculture? Um, it depends on the, no? it depends on how big the, the, the work is, right? So if you're talking about um, multiple hectares, multi, um, hundreds of tons of produce, um, then you might need a more um, uh, um, an expert to manage the supply chain because you have to the, the, the thing with with agriculture supply chain because it's perishable um, you have to consider also the, the, the time to bring because the, the, the faster you can bring it to the market um, the, the lesser the waste the lesser the spoilage right and and um, and understanding all of these uh, levers or understanding all of these parts um, will allow uh, um, uh, 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 more revenue for the for the no for the um, for the farmer, right? So, but if your operation is really a smaller one, maybe a few hectares, um, um, then then you need uh, maybe it one even the owner just to understand what supply chain is uh, to have a basic understanding of of. Of um, uh, what we call uh, maybe a safety stock, buffer stock, or even um, supply chain optimization, where we can improve, um, um, uh, 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 where where we can cut cost and where we can you know um, put a mindset that uh, how to bring it faster to the to the 
to the customer. So um, that's 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 uh, that's my take on it. Okay, thank you so much, sir. Now let's proceed to the next question. Ito naman po, uh, from one of our faculty here in Xavier University College of Agriculture uh, in the agribusiness department. So, sir, engineer Elenito Duran. So, sir, boy Oi. is asking po, how is green logistics practiced in the logistics industry in the Philippines? The, uh, that's a good question. Green logistics um, is very big uh, internationally, especially in... in um, in um, uh, developed countries. However, for emerging countries, um, green logistics is not yet uh, a big priority. Uh, the main reason for that is cost, right? So because it's costly um, to, to, uh, to have a more efficient, maybe, uh, um, what do you call this, um, to consider a lot of the different uh, reduction of waste, um, are, are what we call this uh, carbon credit, carbon uh, emissions, all of that. So, um, wala masyado in terms of ane, in, in, in emerging countries. But here we still have that, particularly for the large FMCGs, for the large multinationals. A lot of our members of the association uh, subscribe to green logistics. They always find, they always ask their their partners on on what what kind of green green um, initiatives. Uh, maybe um, uh, cost savings or or improvement in the, like for example, um, if you're able to to do consolidation, uh, this is an example of, of green logistics in in a FMCG or a multinational perspective. Um, if you can consolidate more orders in a bigger truck, maybe maybe com- compared to five trucks, you could put it in one truck. Um, your carbon emissions become lower, right? So mas konti ang 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 um, ang diesel na gagamit, mas, mas lesser ang, ang CO2 emissions. So th- that savings alone becomes green, right? So a lot of them also um, use, um, uh, a lot of the FMC, FMCGs use, um, uh, what do you call this, mga solar panels, uh, use green energy. Um, when they develop now, um, uh, a lot of the, uh, the buildings, the warehouses, um, they incorporate also um, passive cooling, incorporate also uh, a lot of solar energies um, to make it more efficient so so that is that is one um, uh, it, but in in, in in eventually we're gonna get there because um, like what they said uh, at the Paris Accords in the, I think by 2025 or 2030 we have to have a certain amount of uh, carbon emissions already um, um, lessened so so we're gonna go there but um, it's not gonna be as fast as the other developed countries because uh, uh, most of our restrictions here is cost because greening logistics is very uh, costly, right? So, but there are a lot of initiatives out there that that um, is trying to change that, um, like um, uh, carbon carbon credits. Um, we have a lot of carbon credits. Uh, I think there's a lot of carbon credits projects, especially here, uh, that can be used to offset that cost. So, so. Hopefully, in the, in the next future, we're going to get there uh, more prevalently. Yes, okay. It's uh, it's understandable din naman po since we're still developing. Uh, we're a developing country. So, baby steps lang <laughs> muna yes. tayo. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. Now, let's move to the next question. Ito naman po from GMC Work. Is there a plan in the supply chain to consider building trains to connect islands and to reach far-flung farm areas? Um, can you trains? Do you mean trains? Trains, po. Okay, yeah. So, so, um, from from my understanding, uh, with build, 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 um, they're developing a train from all the way from the north, going to the um, going down to up to I think Matnog yata in 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 ano, in in Sorsogon. So, so they've built uh, a lot of roads from the north, going to I think it's going to be finished in the next few years, going to to um uh to the southern tip uh um Sorsogon, uh and then from there of course Rorona um I totally agree trains is the most efficient um, um logistics that can greatly reduce logistics can can be green greener greener than than you know, um that can be also green logistics right? because it will cut down carbon emissions eh? and there's already been uh, uh development on that side um, from what I understand on the Build 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 project, what DPWH uh, presented, uh, they want to put a train all the way from the north going 
uh, all the way to the south in Bicol and Sorsogon area. Um, I'm just not sure what's the at what uh, what stage it is, um, but that's a really good plan. From my understanding, um, the train is coming uh, initially now is from the north, at least from Subic uh, up to up to I think if I remember correctly up to the NCR, mm -hmm. and then maybe going to to um, uh, Quezon I think like that. But I, I, I don't quote me yet there. Uh, from um, uh, but. I believe there's a plan for that, and I'm very that one. That's something that I'm very excited with, now because if you can put more cargo in trains, that's really more cost effective. At the same time, um, uh, lesser in terms of uh, pollution. Okay, thank you so much, sir, for clearing that up. Now, this is the last question, na po, because I know uh, you also have uh, somewhere to be after this. <laughs> so, ito po, considering the cost of fuel, vehicle maintenance, and other expenses, is the logistics business profitable? Um. Uh, okay. Let Let me. Uh, the logistics business is profitable. Uh, period. Um, you just know how to manage your cost. Um, the the margins are are quite good, but it depends on the clientele, right? If you if you know how to find the client, because logistics. Um, remember during the pandemic, logistics is one of the few, actually the first industry, that was still surviving. It was the first industry that that um, was left to to survive uh, during the pandemic because it's one of the most essential, right? Bringing food, bringing uh, essential goods um, uh, from from one point to another uh, is the most important thing. Without that lifeblood, um, people will starve, or 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 people will not uh, get near their PPEs or their their uh, face masks or face shields, right? So. Transport and logistics is very important. Um, even during the, the even during the uh, um, the the economic downturns like the the 2007, 2007 crisis, 1997 crisis, logistics is still is still there because at the end of the day, people still needs to eat, people still needs to buy, uh, people still needs their goods. Uh, it's an essential thing. So so um, you can still find uh, uh, it's still a business that is is profitable. Um, the only challenge is that how to find those customers. Um, uh, in general, the margins are really good, around maybe thirty percent. Um, if you're really good, that if, if you if you get a lot of good clients, um, uh, and then around fifteen, maybe twenty percent for larger uh, daily um, bulk clients. So it's prof profitable. It's really more of how to manage your costs. Um, um, and I've seen a lot of. In, in all honesty, I've seen a lot of um, uh, logistics providers uh, just 10 years ago uh, is one of the biggest, uh, are, are already the biggest um, uh, businesses, uh, even, even um, um, what they call mm -hmm. this, even uh, becoming a listed company. So, so that is, uh, and, and, and it just shows that that growth itself um uh allows a, a a good a good business right and the thing is as a growing economy um uh the more the more we grow the more logistics is needed the more transport is needed the more the more distribution is needed it's really um um it's really a profitable business but you also need the 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 know-how uh to go into that business so that that's the that's my thing Yes, thank you, sir. Very well said. Now, sir, uh, last request na lang po talaga namin. Uh, last uh, parting message po or takeaway message to all of our viewers uh, today. Ah, okay. So, first and foremost, I thank everybody who attended. I also thank um, um, Xavier uh, University uh, for uh, and, and also Dimas Keda to have invited me here. Um, and, and, and one of my, um, uh, one of my, uh, especially SIMAP, one of our our major reasons to, of being is really to educate. And we want to educate, um, we want to inspire the next generation, especially the agriculture students. Um, there was a study uh, that that um, uh, the average age of, of our farmers is around diba, 60. Na nga. Baka ngayon, kasi that was a few years ago, baka 70. Na ngayon, diba? And we need the next generation. And I, I'm re really happy with the push of Sektar, of, of DA, inspiring the next generation of, of farmers. And <clears throat> And on top of that, uh, I just want to say that farming is not anymore what it used to be. Because the 
ang tanim ay hindi biro, ang ano, nakayo ko, di ba? But now, farming is sexy, especially with all of the technologies. With all of the technologies coming in, and it's perfect for 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 the next generation to to develop these technologies, to develop these new new um, ways of agriculture, and get inspired by you know by by other countries like Netherlands, like Israel. Just imagine, put it this way: Israel, the share to yoni. When you look, you look at it as a desert, but they're able to grow crops. They're they're even exporting. E tayo, um, we are blessed with God. We're blessed by God that we've given a very uh, a very highly dense nutrient uh, rich uh, country in soil agriculture country. So it's not shouldn't be very hard for us. And with technology, I'm sure uh, we will get to a point that we'll be exporting all of our of our beautiful um, highly uh, high value crops. And 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 that's really my parting words. I uh, I want to focus more on the next generation. Um, and and uh, so that the, the 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 Philippine population is the world population is growing, and we need farmers to feed not only our country but also the world. So thank you very much. Mm-hmm.